Hey, what's up guys? Arva here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2018 career mode. Episode number 105 today for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous episode, which was the championship decider for this season for both titles, the drivers and constructors, then be sure to go check that one out at Brazil before you see this one. But we come into this then, the championship has been decided. It's all about just going out there and having a fun final race here in Season 5. You can see we maintain the lead in the performance chart. You can see McLaren actually bring a tiny minor upgrade to Abu Dhabi which is very odd uh, considering there's an engine regulation change for next year so pretty much everyone barring actually Force Indian Williams who also joined McLaren but they bring in even some major upgrades or well, that might even be an ultimate for Force India so very weird uh, place to make an upgrade right at the end of the season when you've got a regulation change so we'll see how that affects them into season six but uh, yeah everyone else stays put really there and you can see what I mean by last episode saying that Red Bull pretty much become a midfield team there as they've fallen back to pretty much nearly near enough to Mercedes and their junior team Torosso so very very odd but yeah we go into Q1 then and we go into this race weekend a bit calmer you know no pressure I, I can feel relaxed I can just go about this race and try to enjoy the performance level of this car of course because with the engine regulations being reset this is probably the highest car I'll ever get to drive in a while because actually this uh, Ferrari car in terms of the actual stats numbering the performance chart has got higher than what we got for the season two Haas so this is the best car I've ever driven in a career mode in terms of you want to look at it we're kind of mathematically with the performance data for the engine chassis and aero and so with the engine resetting it's uh, going to be a while now probably that we get back to this because it will take a whole season and probably longer to get back that entire engine performance I think depending on how how quickly your your team kind of gets resource points and develops so now we're going to move through into Q2 like you saw there we've got a bit of traffic unfortunately though of one red ball there so that's a little bit frustrating but at the moment we're P8 in the session we're going to come through the final few corners of course though I haven't even set a lap time there so that's kind of that P8 doesn't even mean anything so we come through the last corner still getting a load of dirty air across the line we're up into P2 but obviously no one really sets a lap time there and actually as we go on to our second flying lap we find ourselves down in P14 so that's how much time I lost behind that Red Bull car but Vettel was P15 there as well so it, as a whole very strangely after performing well in Q1 after the sun starts to really come down at Yas Marina I guess the colder temperatures I don't know the car seems to be not performing too well as you can see on the top uh, right I'm hardly improving that much I, I need to find way more time than I have done on the top right and so this might be a bit of unfortunate final qualifying session here for us at Yas Marina as we come through the last corner then Vettel still last I lose a massive heap of time on the rear end and we're going to qualify down in P11 Vettel won't even make it off P15 so a horrendous time so I don't know what's going on there uh have Ferrari just turned down the engines turned down everything because we won both championships last race so you know it, there's no point for us really to fight so I don't know if Ferrari turned down everything but very very odd because I, I thought I pushed that lap to the maximum clearly because I pushed it so hard uh, at a tank slapper at the end there and we only got P11 so very very weird and frustrating the way to be P11 and Vettel to see him in P15 so I both of us. So both of us are going to have to make some sort of comeback drive. Last episode, at the very end of the Grand Prix at Brazil, the car was looking mega strong. So I'm hoping maybe this is just a kind of fl uh, kind of fluff here in qualifying and in the race we can turn it up and really get stuck into it. But at least from P11, it does mean we can have some really nice overtaking, just have a lot of fun with the Grand Prix basically. And that's exactly the, the whole point of this final race basically for us. It's just to go out there and have some racing fun. So let's go to the grid then and see how we round things off. So here we are, ready to go racing for one final time this year. Another season of victories, controversies and rivalries lies in our wake. And just one challenge remains here in the United Arab Emirates on a circuit that made its spectacular debut back in 2009. Welcome to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The drivers will be racing here on Yaz Island today through 21 corners and a lap distance of around 3.4 miles. There are plenty of opportunities to pass with long straights and DRS zones in two places, at turns 8 and at turn 11. Plenty of close racing then, plenty of speed and plenty of drama to be found in the laps to come. With me today of course is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the engineer. What a season they've had. A well-deserved championship victory and the pressure now surely off with the title already in the bag. It really is well-deserved. I wouldn't say it's been a fruitless title challenge, but certainly one that has been consistent and well-managed. Here's hoping they let off a bit of steam today and give us an exciting race. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. 
Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Holkenberg, Alonso, Stoffel van Dorn, and Perez, Hartley, the engineer, Ericsson, and Charles Leclerc. Verstappen, they've taken a grid penalty. Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen, and Ricardo, Gasly, Ocon, Lance Stroll, and Valtteri Bottas. And Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so for this final race in Season 5, we move up into P8, actually, because some people have some grid penalties, so we're on the left-hand side of the grid now. Unfortunately, though, uh, my teammate Sebastian Vettel moves all the way down to, like, second-last place there with some major engine penalties right at the end of this season. I guess the engine getting a little bit knackered there, uh, so we'll see how he gets on, really, through this race, but he might be able to pull off a one-stop strategy here from Ultras to Super Softs. I could pull off that same strategy, but because, like I said, I want to have some fun here today, don't want to do some overtaking, so I'm going to go on to the two-stop and go hypers and two sets of ultras and just basically yeah just hopefully overtake some cars i'd rather do that than have a bit of a boring one-stop race so here we go then for the final time in season five to five red lights to the abu dhabi grand prix from p8 on the grid what can we do for the final time here fire lights are out and we're on the way for 28 laps around yas marina very good getaway actually compared to the force india who's very slow off the mark the torosso does well to get around the outside hartley there we tried to battle him to turn one a slight bit of contact as he pinches me into the apex and we just narrowly pulled this through on the inside to the outside now as we go slowly down the hill now to the heart of the next sector then we're going to try and get this down the inside big old dive and we're going to cut across the racing line and we're up into p6 so already looking pretty damn good we've got the two mclarens up ahead uh, and then you've got uh, lewis hamilton i think that was who was on the front row but has already been overtaken by the renault so the renault's are now one two no surprise there. very strong at the end of this season but hopefully we'll try and chase them up and we are going to chase up van Dorn. we move on to lap two in the same part of the track on the back straight into the chicane and the main straight for the support paddock but you can see we just can't quite get enough speed on van Dorn off acceleration the engine is actually a little bit worn our internal combustion engine this final fourth one is a little bit on the worn side it's not heavily worn but just a little bit uh, lime green there so we're gonna have to wait until the drs zone as we move on to lap number three and so with drs now remember our car is being so op with drs open because of those upgrades we did in the middle of the season around Spa with the DRS updates. And so we're going to make a move on the right-hand side on the outside. A bit unconventional way to do it, but as uh, Alonso also does the same thing to Hamilton. I follow suit and we're down the inside then up into P5. DRS second bite of the cherry there to try and close up to Hamilton and also get away from Van Dorn because he keeps up with me actually and closes in somewhat in the acceleration zone. But now I'm hoping that I can get on the back of Hamilton pretty damn quick really and overtake him because the Mercedes car obviously it's only right up there due to that qualifying glitch in Q3 so I uh, can try and get past him quite quickly through the last turn we actually make a move on the outside very unorthodox place to make a move and so now uh, the fellow Brit Hamilton goes side by side with me he's just about pulled ahead though on the acceleration but to the inside of turn one little lock up there tiny graze of the side pod but it was still going at it and now we'll pull through and that's the downforce of the Ferrari kicking in and we're up into P4 just about as we we got a little bit opposite lock there for a moment and uh, scare myself for a tad. But now we are all going and set in P4. And we'll try our best to chase after Fernando Alonso. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel is on the move now. He's uh, away from second last place. I think he's uh, just up to about maybe P15, I think this is. Down the inside, one of the Force India cars there. Needs to try and pull through in a straight line. You can see Bottas, though, struggling. The other Mercedes car way down the order. Vettel will have DRS here, so he should be able to pull away quite nicely. There you go. Very, very quick to pull away. But ahead of Vettel, you've got the likes of the Tarossos, the Albers, the Haas, the two Red Bull cars actually who I forgot even, you know, they didn't really qualify that well. I think Verstappen got into Q3, but Ricardo got knocked out in Q2, so you've got so many cars for Vettel to pass here, so if he wants to get some good points for the last race of the season, he's going to really have to hope his one-stop pulls off, and he is on a one-stop because he's on a set of ultras, and so like I said, the default from ultras would be going to a uh, set of super soft tyres to the end of the Grand Prix, whereas I chose to go more aggressive route for a two-stop, and you can see it's actually working for me because I'm keeping up with the leaders somewhat. We're closing up on Fernando Alonso and the two Renault's on the same strategy as them. And on lap six now, we're going to have a chance to overtake Fernando as we close up now rapidly. Look at this, how much time we've gained there down that straight. He was miles away from us. And now we do the dive to the inside. And that's that, it's that classic Abu Dhabi switchback move now at the chicane. The Nico Rosberg, I like to call it because that was the most infamous one I can remember of at the chicane. And so now we go on the left-hand side though and overtake him. He's going to squeeze us a little bit to the wall, but we get ahead of him back to the racing line and we're up into P3 now. A little bit deep though, so we have to do some defensive work immediately. But then we're going to keep that through. And now we try and see if we can chase after 
Carlo Sainz and Hulkenberg. Now, so far, the pace has been pretty damn good for the Renaults, and I thought it was pretty damn good for Alonso and Van Dorn. But as we've gone through this stint, I've been catching them up a little bit, and so I feel like I was maybe deploying a bit more ERS than they were towards the end of this stint. And so we do close up a little bit on Sainz, but he's still a few car lengths away from us. So we're going to come into the pit lane now with him and Alonso. Holkenberg continues on for one more lap. So let's try and see now if we can maybe get a bit of an undercut on Holkenberg and close up to him. Well, I guess all three of us will be trying to close up to him because Sainz and Alonso have come in for this uh, one lap earlier stop than Holkenberg. So now onto a set of ultras to basically the end of the Grand Prix. We'll go ultra, ultra, basically in terms of our pit stops and so now out in this very unique pit lane there but you can see actually they're going to be quite close to science so if there's a bit of traffic maybe ahead of science if they back science up into me that would be very ideal indeed so we'll see how that works out but we come out in some pretty clean air uh, all three of us so i say clean air science got some traffic but me and alonso have some uh, relative clean air compared to him so that traffic ahead of him is going to be actually this fight between the Haas and torosa and sebastian vettel is caught up in this and so this is uh gassy i think that is around the uh, down the inside of the Haas car of, i think that's grosjean and you've got vettel though right behind them this might come uh, become a three-way scrap and that's uh, carlos science right up behind him and there's my ferrari car falling behind so this might get very tasty for us as vettel goes for the move on that's magnuson actually by his helmet so vettel down the inside of magnuson the toros has put through but look at science he gets held up so much we're going to switch back on him to the left hand side of the circuit dive it down the inside very aggressive on the Haas. i will fully admit that was very very overly aggressive on magnuson but i had to make that pass work because he's uh, he's basically traffic he's not in my race today he's on a one stop i think maybe magnuson releases uh, out of uh, sync of this uh, strategy that me and science are on so just went for the bold you know lick the stamp and send it as dan ricardo would say and we're up into p5 now and we're chasing off to vettel and this will be a pretty easy pass in a straight line but very, what, what did i say very easy move on science actually because of that traffic vettel holding up magnuson magnuson holding up science and so just took it nice and calm got the cut back line on the left hand side and so we're up the order now speaking of of getting up the order we're up the order into p4 now ahead of vettel obviously he doesn't put up much of a fight there's no point for him too and we move on now to the end of lap nine as we enter the hotel section looking lovely as ever and now can we size up a move on sergio perez down the inside we're gonna go for it it's so close once again a little bit of rubbing on the side pod there but ultimately i have the better grip and so that was a crucial move for us to get into clean air and again with this move on ericsson with the drs pretty simple pass to be honest and we're up into p2 now and so hulkenberg still remains in p1 and looks like he's actually gained some time because even though i was as quick as i was at making overtakes there um it just wasn't quick enough and hulkenberg gained some time but now we've got uh, this is grosjean with an engine failure there smoking away in the hotel section quite a dangerous place to park up and so there's safety car He's going to get called out now on lap 13 this is. And so we are in now for a pit stop. We've dived in the luckiest position to be in for a safety car. And Holkenberg has to continue on. So we're going to get a free pit stop now, effectively. The same thing for Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso behind me. They'll get free pit stops. Vettel had already pit on lap 12, I think that was. But look at that in the background. Even both McLarens are in. Uh, Van Dorn and Alonso and Sainz. But all three of them in for this free pit stop with me. And so the only loser is going to be Nico Holkenberg. Because Vettel pit in on lap 12. So he's not gained a free pit stop. But he's also not lost anything because he was always going to make that pit stop so there he is now coming through the final corner and so this is going to be very good for all of us and not so much for Holkenberg because he's not going to pit under the safety car now there's no point to and he's going to have to make a pit stop now pretty much immediately as soon as the safety car comes in so we're going to be in second place on a set of super softs that will take us through to the end of the Grand Prix so I've bailed on going to two sets of ultras because from lap 13 I wasn't going to get to the end on ultras so I'd rather play it safe and go into the red wall tires but here we go now going green and Holkenberg up ahead still in that warm set of ultras he's not going to come in straight away though so we'll have a chance to maybe see if we can close up on him but it's going to be supers even worn ultras will still be a little bit better I think at this stage because they're not ultimately so worn for Holkenberg right now but in two laps time they might be but we'll try our best to close up to him but I think we're in P2 but Vettel I think he's uh, I'm looking at the map. I think he's probably I'm going to guess around P8 I think so he's got a very good chance because I think the likes of Gasly are also yet to make a pit stop because I didn't see Gasly in the pit lane. And so I think Holkema, Gasly, maybe even a Sauber is going to basically come into the pit lane. And so Vettel might get up into around P5. And then all he has to try and do is maybe try and overtake Alonso and Sainz. I say all he has to do. Obviously, the car wasn't performing too well in qualifying for him. So we'll see how it goes here. But I'm going to try my best now to close up with Holkema with overtake mode and Richmond. As you can see, I am gaining a little bit on the straights, but it's just ultimately not enough into the chicane. You can see 
on the exit, I'm just not going to get the acceleration that he can. I don't know if that's the car or the tyres. It might be a combination of both, but at this stage, I just can't get him. But remember, I don't need to actually fuss about getting him because he's going to come in for the pits anyway soon enough. So I can play it calm and cool and just wait about. As uh, Meanwhile, we've got Vettel now making the moves around the outside of the Sauber car there. That's the Taurus of Hartley behind. That's Gasly leading the train. Gasly, Sainz, uh, Alonso, and then it's going to be Vettel side by side with this Sauber. So Vettel is already not too far off that top five fight. He's already got past the likes of Van Dorn and Hartley then on the restart, I would assume. And he's now past the Sauber. And so he's only got now uh, Alonso Sainz ahead of him for real racing uh, kind of a position because Gasly will come in eventually for a pit stop along with this man, Nico Hulkema. There you go, lap 18. He's in now. 10 laps to go. He'll pit in onto ultras probably. But we're going to continue on now on our supers to the end of the Grand Prix. Gasly's in. What did I say? So there it goes. Now the pecking order is myself. Carlos Sainz in second. Fernando Alonso third. Vettel in fourth place. So this could be quite an amazing and once again miraculous 1-2 for Ferrari if Vettel pulls up his socks and overtakes Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso. Remember, we've had two 1-2s in a row so far. A miracle one at Mexico and then a pretty damn good one at Brazil. Could it be a third one to wrap up this season in some sort of style as Alonso and Sainz go dueling for second and third place. Now Alonso gets the better of the more junior Spaniard now on the right hand side but Sainz will come back at him in the break zone maybe. But Alonso ultimately has to cut in now to get behind Sainz and actually hits him a little bit. So that might be a bit of damage on the front wing of the McLaren car there, actually. So Vettel is going to be lurking like a shark then for P3. And so he's going to move on through this Grand Prix on the main straight, down the inside, big break zone there. Vettel on the left, Alonso on the right. But Alonso keeps his nose in there through the second part of the chicane. Meanwhile, you've got Carlos Sainz also closing up on me. So as these two go neck and neck, Sainz is also on my outside there with DRS. Overtake mode activated for us. The hand of anger goes up as he makes some contact with us. But we're going to outbreak him now and squeeze him off there wide and retain first place and there goes Vettel up into third place beautiful stuff there and so Seb now is looking at the back of Carlos Sainz for second and now here he goes now with only a couple of laps left in the Grand Prix around the outside with DRS he'll have the inside line for the chicane will Sainz squeeze him or give him the room he will give him some space and Vettel pushes him out a little bit with the elbows out now to drag race down to the next part of the lap it's the uh, the three pronged chicane so Vettel really needs to make sure he gets ahead before that it's very hard to actually make a pass in the middle and there you go who's Vettel he is up into second place and I can't quite believe it he's done it he's he's come from 19th place to P2 on the grid boy the stonking one stop there obviously gifted a little bit by the safety car as well but still and so he's going to complete the one two for Ferrari and so I can't quite believe the season's going to end like this it was so topsy-turvy it's been such a up and down season and yet we're going to end this season with three one twos in a row for Ferrari this is Ferrari dominant nation like you haven't seen in the modern V6 era and so we end season 5 here with a win at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix our 7th win for my lucky number 7 for a final time as the world champion of this season and constructors championships we come home for a 1-2 and I'm going to say for the final time this year grazie ragazzi forza Ferrari you worked hard for that one congratulations Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. Uh, I can't quite believe it. Like I said there at the very end of that race, um, after the entire season we've had, I really did not think we would end it off in such a dominant fashion like this with three one-twos. You know, it was me and Vettel, then Vettel and me last race, and then today again, me and Vettel then first and second. Absolutely awesome. And so... 
that is it. That is the end of Season 5. We already crowned the, the champion and the Constructors last race. And so, if you didn't see that episode, yep, we are indeed a triple world champion now. We've won four Constructors titles in our career so far. One with Haas, one with McLaren, and two with Ferrari. And like I said, it has been a very interesting season, to say the least. So up and down with those results there. Disqualification at Spain, which is absurd. Uh, two DNFs that were just in both horrendous ways. But I wouldn't have it any other way, like I said before. You know, we've got seven wins this season. That is the most I've had. The uh, highest I had was five in one season, which was season two. I only had two wins in season three. I had four last year, and this year we get seven, uh, seven wins for, like I said, my lucky number seven. And, and all round, I hope you guys can agree with me, that was a really exciting season. Like, it just went so sideways and backwards and forwards so many different times that I really couldn't call it. And even towards the end, I was getting quite scared of the way Science and Renault were closing up, but then we kind of, you know, got a little bit defiant. We got a little bit lucky in Mexico, obviously, but then Brazil was all on us, I think, in terms of the strategy. A little bit of luck with the safety car, but ultimately Vettel had just some amazing pace in these last three races, to be fair to him as well. And so, yeah, if you guys did enjoy that episode and the entire season, really, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around, you can subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content, and that's been enough reminiscing about Season 5, and we'll roll on to Season... Uh, wait, I told on. you, if you carried on as you were, and you didn't start putting in the kind of performances the team expected you were going to lose your drive. Well, it's happened. As of today, you are no longer an employee of this organization. Lucky for you, one of us is competent. I found you an option elsewhere, and I suggest you take it if you want any hope of salvaging this so-called career of yours.